Winnipeg Blue Bombers are three-point home favorites against the Ottawa Red Blacks on Friday night, despite being off to an 0-4 start. Zach Kolaris missed practice on Tuesday while the Red Blacks are coming off a walk-off home win against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. JC, can Winnipeg get win number one and cover this short spread? I keep going back and forth on this matchup because obviously the Red Blacks beat them in the first time around. The Bombers have not looked like themselves. And there's all these injury questions we know about the hit they've taken in the receiving core. But Zach Caleros not being on the field over the last number of years, if we had heard that, it would have been pressed the panic button because he was so important to this team. Now, I'm wondering just how important he really is. He has not been good for the first part of the season. And as you've so wonderfully pointed out in your post-game columns, Hodge, he's locked in on specific receivers, has not spread the ball around. Chris Strevler did do that as much as I am not thrilled with his ability as a passer. He did spread the ball around, and he adds an element with his legs. Like I think the Red Blacks might have some difficulty defending. I think even if Strevler is the guy... The Bombers get their first victory here, although I am not confident enough in that assessment not to take the Red Blacks to cover. I know it's a short spread, but I want to hedge my bets here. That's fair, and and I'm going to not hedge my bets here, and then I'll probably regret it next week because I am (laughs) taking Winnipeg to win and cover here. Um, Princess Auto Stadium is a tough place to play. Yes, I picked the BC Lions when the Lions came to town a couple weeks ago, and yes, the Lions covered a very short spread, but I don't think the Red Blacks are on the BC Lions level, and as much as yes, this Winnipeg team will miss Zach Kolaris if, in fact, he does not play. We don't know that, again, as of the recording of this show. I thought that Chris Treveller brought some much-needed energy and some life into that offense. Last week and a half of work, Zach Kolaris only threw 12 passes, and seven were to Nick Dembski. Two were to Drew Olatarski, and a couple were dump-offs to running backs and fullbacks. All of a sudden, Chris Trevler comes in the game, and look, Josh Johnson is there. Look, Ontario Wilson, like guys who I'm not even sure Zach Kolaris knows exist at this point, are not only getting the ball thrown to them, but they're catching it and making plays. One of the most electric plays of the week, I thought, was Ontario Wilson in overtime, catching a pass at the sidelines. Looked like he was going to be knocked out for like a pretty modest gain. And yet in a phone booth, he made a couple of defenders miss and got down for 19 yards down the sideline to set up what would have been a short field goal had Winnipeg not turned the ball over. Uh, Point is I'm bullish on what Chris Treveller can do in this offense. No, I don't think that he's an elite downfield passer, but I think he brings an interesting dimension and I'm encouraged by the way he was able to distribute the football, something that Zach Kolaris has been completely unable to do through four games this season. So I will take the Bombers 